NASA space scientists are tracking a 20-year-old climate satellite which is due to fall down to Earth tomorrow morning. It weighs six and a half tonnes and could either splash down into the sea or crash onto land. Deployed by the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1991, its mission was to study Earth's upper atmosphere, but it was turned off in 2005 and became space junk. There's a 1 in 3,200 risk of satellite debris hitting somebody on Earth. On impact, it'll be travelling at around 200 miles per hour. And on entering the atmosphere, it'll start burning up. But 26 components of the satellite are expected to survive to hit the Earth. So if you're lucky and there's no light pollution, you have at least three opportunities to see the satellite over Britain tonight. Just before five past ten, it'll pass over the southwest of England and a minute later leave the UK skyline over Norfolk. Just after half past 11, it'll orbit over the Western Isles of Scotland, 40 seconds later, leaving the East Coast. It'll then pass over the Outer Hebrides just after one, passing over Aberdeenshire a minute later. Neither NASA nor the RAF know exactly where the space junk will hit or when. It all depends on atmospherics, drag, the weather, and the orbit may change. But the RAF estimates that just half an hour after orbiting, there it is expected to hit the uh, Earth on the edge of the Indian Ocean. Well, a little earlier I spoke to Dr Robert Massey from the Royal Astronomical Society and asked him why it's a 1 in 3,200 risk of a person being hit by the debris. Well, any satellite, if it's close enough to the upper boundary of the Earth's atmosphere, and it, it's worth remembering the Earth's atmosphere doesn't just sharply cut off, it fades and thins away in space, will experience drag as it goes round. And that drag slows it down, and sooner or later it will come back to Earth and it will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere in most cases. That's really not that unusual. So, so why do we not know how much of this is going to burn up? Some of the satellite, rather than being of made of materials which will burn up, which will disintegrate at relatively low temperatures, is a lot tougher. The fuel tanks, for example, these are things made of steel and titanium, and they'll survive the passage through to the atmosphere, and so you'll get a fair number of smaller chunks that do make it all the way down to the Earth. Is this any more likely or less likely to cause damage than the, the normal space debris and rock and everything that comes through the it, Earth's atmosphere? Well, it's more likely to, because it's a bit bigger, because the pieces are a bit bigger, but the, the numbers are still very, very comforting. I mean, you know, I don't want anything to happen to anybody as a result of this, but you're looking at a one in 3,000 chance of somebody somewhere on Earth having a problem. And yeah, how do they work that out? It seems like a ludicrous statistic. You look at the size of the satellite, look at how it'll break up, you know, look at how big people are, how big buildings are, the fraction of the Earth that's inhabited, and you come up with that number. Uh, and if you look at it for you or I, the odds of you or I being struck by this as we're out and about on our, our business tonight or at home are about 1 in 20 trillion. So you're much more likely to win the lottery or much more likely to be struck by lightning. They're, they're saying don't touch it if you see a bit of it on the floor. Why? The only convincing answer I've seen so far is that it's got sharp edges. There's oh, right, no okay. suggestion it's, <laughs> it's really, really dangerous or anything. It's just, look, it might be a bit sharper. And it is actually still technically the property of the US government. Just finally, um, let me also ask you about this possible discovery by scientists at CERN, that Einstein might have been wrong about the theory of rel relativity. I mean, what they seem to have asserted is that some very small particles can travel faster than the speed of light. Do you believe well, it? I, my gut instinct is that the result's probably wrong. Uh, Robert Massey talking to me earlier. Don't forget, you can reach me direct on Twitter at ChrisGM. We're back tomorrow, 20 to 7. Until then, that is Channel 4 News. Have a very good evening.